Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, today is another beautiful day and we'll be analyzing another business model. So today I'll be doing Jyoti Resins and Adhesives. I think most of you all would have heard about this company, right? And it had, and this company has performed really well for the last one year, right? So let us see, like, let us see in today's video, like, will the growth trajectory continue or, you know, what is the, what, what is the future of the company looks like, right? So uh, I'll just start directly with the presentation only. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, so the company we are doing is Jyoti Resins and Adhesives. First, let us understand the product portfolio. Okay, what is the uh, more than the product portfolio? Let us understand the business model first. What does the what does the company do? Simple Sati, the company does adhesives. What does adhesive mean? In a simple language, adhesive is nothing but glue. You would have seen Fevicol, right? When you were a kid, what, what would you use that Fevicol? You know, the white color gum. You would use it to what to stick to things, or you would have seen it in that art and craft, right? But there you were using for your art and crafts, but here the adhesive or the glue that you're using, it is specifically for wood right you would have seen right when a carpenter comes and let's say if something in your house is broken maybe a cot ka ek a leg is broken or something you would have seen right those people would use this white color ka ek, ek liquid so that is what it is it is nothing but uh these people nothing they they manufacture nothing but glue or adhesive as you call it specifically that is used in wood or uh, that is used in wood now of course when you go out you are not going to see this this name called jyoti resins and adhesives right if you go to any if you ask a carpenter you know like oh do you use Jyoti Resin and Adhesive, he might not know it. So what they have is Jyoti Resin and Adhesive is a company, but their brand name or they sell it. They sell the adhesive under the brand name called Euro, Euro 7000. Can you see it on under all the bucket in all the bucket? It is written Euro, Euro, Euro. So they have this brand called Euro. They sell it under this brand, right? So that's that. Can you see here? They have a very diversified product portfolio. Also, they have a lot of things going on when you talk about glue, when you talk about glue for or the adhesive that goes into goes in wood. Can you see an anti-termite application? Application. Uh, termite is basically an insect or a worm. So what happens is this termite feed or they eat the wood or you know the dead plant, right? As a result, what happens as they eat this wood, uh, the uh, the strength of the wood uh, becomes less. And of course, if that if that material is used in any structural component, let's say if, if you're building a wooden staircase and this termite ends up being there and they start eating this wood, right? Over over a, over a period of time, what will happen? The stair because the the structural integrity of your uh, what is that structural integrity of the stairs will get loosened and of course right it will it will cause structural damage it will break so anti-termite is is a kind of a wood or uh, wooden glue or a wood adhesive that prevents the formation of of this insects like termite like i'm not going to go into detail now like you understand that right? there are many many diversified product portfolio and not only that you know the product like the the way they sell in terms of quantity also it goes from 500 grams to 70 kgs you know that kind of big big buckets also they do sell so that's about the product right now once we're clear about the product let us try and understand what is the usp or as you would call it the mode or the competition edge that this company has right over the others because when i talk about glue when i talk about adhesive i think the first thing that goes into the, your head is like oh pedalite and pedalite is such a great company it has been here for for the last 65 years right so you know what is their moat how are they able to crack this and you know gain market share when this giant like pedalite has been there for so many years so Jyoti Resins and Adhesive, they run a program called the Loyalty Program or a, or an award or a reward program for, for these carpenters, right? Because anyways, this wood ka glue that is there, the end customer is nobody but carpenter. You and I will not take a bucket of, uh, you know, Euro 7000 and we keep it in a house, right? The carpenters use it because, of course, they, they deal with a lot of these wood, wooden thing, right? So what happens here is, let's say if I'm a carpenter and if I go to buy a product of Jyoti Resins and uh, Jyoti, sorry, Euro 7000, if I go to buy that product, what happens? Let's say I spend 100 rupees of money there, right? Then what happens? Maybe a certain percentage for every purchase. What I what I get is I get a points that will be credited to my account. Over a period of times, you know, when this point is sufficient, it will get auto debited in the sense like, let's say I, I go again for the next time when I purchase and, and whoever is there, you know, from wherever I go, they'll see in my account like, oh, you have so and so points, you can redeem it. So it, maybe the product will cost 100 rupees. But over the, over the years, I've accumulated so many points. As a result, I might have to pay just 60 rupees or 80 rupees. You get that right you, you're understanding how a reward system works or a point system works i think most of us have this experience with like flipkart or amazon right we purchase something i think flipkart is a good example we purchase something and we get flipkart coins right and then you know once you know, when a when a certain amount is there you can you can redeem that point and you get a you, you get to offer in your in your final bill 
So this similar kind of thing, even they ran with the carpenter, uh, with, with the carpenters, and this has proven to be very loyal. Uh, this has proven to be, you know, uh, made the carpenters very loyal to them. Because of course, right? Let's say you you are buying something from Flipkart and you have accumulated points there. You know now that it's it's a pure psychology play also on one end because you know now you are you have to spend hundred rupees less on this platform compared to another platform because again, and because of that you tend to go and shop only from that platform. It's a similar type of story here going on, right? So that is one thing. So that is one of their main USPs or competitive edge that they really take pride of. Uh, then can you see here? Of course, right now they are in 13 states. They have 10,000 active dealers and 50 distributors. And you know they have a network of 3 lakh carpenters. Now, one thing I would like to highlight is here, the volume growth becomes very crucial, right? Because when you talk about adhesive general, you can't keep increasing the price. Because if you increase the price, there will be somebody who might not be willing to increase the price, some of the other competitors. And then what? There might be a problem, of course, right? There might be a shift of your customer. So here, when you talk about growth in terms of volume and value, here it primarily comes to like volume play. Right, and you can see here the majority of the revenue is coming from five states that is, Gujarat. I've, I've put the percentage of revenue Gujarat around 30 to 35, Rajasthan, and, and other, uh, other places like Karnataka and Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. Right, so we've understood the business mode, we've understood the business model. Let us try and understand the outlook. Right, what is this? What is this company projecting? So, the company plans around a 25% volume growth in the coming years, like from FI23 FI is a base. If you take for the coming three years, it is until FI26. They, they are they are uh, they have given a guidance uh, of 25% volume growth while maintaining a margin around 20 to 20, uh, 22 to 25%. Right, and of course, they're, they're targeting a CAGR of 25% growth. Now, how will this growth come from? Let us see. Right. So first thing is, like you know, this company was started long back, but in, in the year 2006, they started this brand called Euro 7000 and they started selling this white glue. Okay. So of course, right, you understand this white glue is your final product. White glue is nothing but your adhesive only. So this final product to make it, of course, you need a lot of raw materials. All these raw materials are imported from different different countries. And finally, they manufacture the uh, the final product that is a white glue in their plant called Santej uh, uh, in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. That's why can you see here the majority of the sale comes from Gujarat, around 30 to 35 percent. That's one thing. Now we understand why because even they started there and their plant is also there. So when they started, right, they started with 250 tons per month in uh, earlier um, uh, when they started, I think in 2006. They started with this and they started entering the Gujarat market. Later, what happened in the year 2016 and 17, they increased their capacity in that plant uh, to so that the plant can produce 500 tons per month and they moved into, they went, they, uh, they started the distribution to another state that is called Maharashtra. In 2018 and 2019, what had happened, they had increased the capacity to 1000 tons per month and they moved into 12 states. Among that, among the 12 states were the Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and which was the other one, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and uh rajasthan right that those were the states in mode now what had happened in 2022 they have again expanded the capacity from uh 1000 tons per month to 2000 tons per month right it's basically 2x and of course they're pouring into many other states uh and and, and that, that's a process right Further, right now, even after this whole 2022, after the whole 2,000 tons per month, they're increasing it further to 2,400 tons per month. And here's the thing, they're increasing it to 2,400 tons per month, and they're building a warehouse here. So this is the whole plan. Now, in spite of building the capacity and increasing the capacity to 2,400 tons per month, what has happened is their current plan that is there at the Santej now, it is still running at hardly 50 to 60% capacity utilization. That's it. It is not running more than that. So what they're planning to do is, once it goes up to this 80% capacity utilization, once this plant goes, then they will go invest in the uh, in buying another plant, maybe uh, maybe uh, doing a greenfield project. And they're planning to do this after 1.5 years. If again, once the, the current plant reaches the 80% utilization, they're planning to open another plant in, in probably in the south of India, somewhere in Bangalore. So that's the whole plan. The, uh, how are they able to penetrate into 25? Sorry, how are they able to like go into the whole 25% growth rate or 25% CHR for the next three years and having a 25% volume growth on a uh, year on year plus while maintaining is this is the plan like I told you they've increased the capacity already and of course uh, they've increased the capacity and the second thing is like I told you here when you talk about adhesive it is more of a volume growth after volume growth kaise aega, the more you do distribution the more you increase your active dealers the more you do this that's how you get your that's how we get the uh, volume growth right the best example again to this would be what Varun Beverages did how did they get the volume growth of course there was a product mix because of sting the game changed but 
but also as a you know they they started pouring into new markets same thing ha is happening with vector also right you can see vector is giving a 40% ka volume uh, 40% ka growth how did vector do this vector also increase your distribution you would have seen that right because of this the volume growth comes the more you increase your distribution the more you have more active dealers you have or the number of stores one another prime example with volume growth is metro how was metro able to do 25% ka growth of course premiumization ka trend tha the other one is you would have seen the, uh, when uh, nissan joseph came uh, nissan joseph started interacting right i think in q1 of last year he had given a guidance of 260 stores in the next 3 years right and that's how the volume growth came the 25% ka sage at there anyways we are digressing but to understand the uh, basic point that volume growth comes from distribution right and you can see that their distribution how are they doing already they are in this 12 states right and i showed you the five majority five major states where the revenues majority of the revenues coming from right now what they are planning to do is they are trying to venture into two more states and these two more states can be either uttar pradesh or delhi in the north or it can be chennai and kerala in the south so of course right uh, one is they're entering into two new states and they still feel that the current states they are there in like gujarat maharashtra uh, mp right and and karnataka they still feel that they have not penetrated deep enough you know not, not to the tight to and tight and they feel that you know there are much more uh, penetration to be done there so that's that's how they plan to grow yeah uh, and now let's just see the Oh uh, yeah another thing i would like to highlight is uh, i keep uh, stressing about volume growth right and they have had a robust volume growth for q4 uh, for the entire year of fy23 and that is 27.5% and this quarter if you see they've had a volume growth of 8% uh, like if you see from q3 to q4 in spite of seasonality why i tell seasonality is because uh you would you, you would know right any kind of consumption business especially paints business this is kind of related to paints business also if you see this all of these people have the highest revenue or the highest revenue in a year coming from q3 because q3 means wo uh, festivals hota hai people tend to paint the houses and repair things now before diwali i think this culture is very prevalent in the north of india because of that what happens a majority of sales comes from q3 and q4 becomes a bit a bit dull as comparison to q3 because of that seasonality factor but in spite of that can you see here even on a quarter on quarter they have done a 8% volume growth which is really fantastic right so now let's just see the financial statements so the first thing first is can you see here that the revenue has increased right revenue has increased on a quarter on uh, sorry revenue has increased 13% year on year but on a quarter on quarter basis it has been flat right now uh, i'll explain the reason why it is flat uh, before that can you see other income has not increased not a major part uh, part also uh, on a year on year you can see that increase has been 137 uh, i think it has been it has increased by 137% and uh, where is it yeah it has been increased uh, 137% and if you see the other thing is the uh, employee benefit expenses even that has increased on a year on year basis which is good right you would see here the part again of course um, one second yeah yeah the reason here for the revenue can you see here being flat on a on a quarter on quarter basis although we've told that a volume growth of 8% has been the quarter on quarter but why is it not projected in in terms of revenue why is that so um remember i spoke about this reward program uh there there are more is this reward program or uh, right so what happens is in this reward program is let me try and explain this in a simple matter right so let's say now i'm a i'm a carpenter right and i go and i get a 100 rupees worth of product right so of course he has to he will get certain points credited in, in his account right like because he purchased let's assume the amount of points that is credited in his account is 10 rupees so what happens is this 90 rupees will go as will go although he has given the complete 100 rupees to the company 90 rupees will get registered as revenue and the other 10 rupees will get registered as expenses now why this 10 gets registered as expenses is because you know right tomorrow he will come and he will redeem the points right because and which means what you have to pay once he redeems the points only this will go to the revenue back to the revenue so you understand right because of this the expense part of it or the financial liability part of this will increase i i don't know if i'm making sense like if i have explained it properly but yeah i i i don't know but yeah i just try to explain again i don't think i am i'm satisfied with the explanation but here's the thing right if i'm the carpenter and i'm buying a product of 100 100 bucks right and let's say i give i i do give 100 bucks to the company but what happens when it is getting calculated in in uh, calculated by the company they take it as this person has paid 90 rupees that goes into the revenue and the 10 and the 10 rupees will go it go as expenses why because this person will come and redeem the 10 rupees again right after he redeems the 10 rupees as a point once this point then only this will get uh, go into the revenue pack so i hope this is clarified right now how is this affecting here is 
in like i told you remember there is a seasonality aspect between q3 and q4 like i told you one is festival season the second thing what happens is all these carpenters that you see they have migrated from different different places during this season that is in the january february region the january february and march season what happens is they tend to go back to their villages and what happens if they're going back to the villages of course they're not working right so they don't they don't redeem the points if they're not getting if they're not redeem, redeeming the points it, it it becomes still as a part of expenses now it doesn't go to the revenue that is why the revenue has not increased although there has been a volume growth of eight percent quarter on quarter and now i hope this is understood now now the how much has been the amount that has not been redeemed it has been five crores so if i add that five crores here right 66.8 if i add five crores here that redeemed points the, the points that are supposed to be redeemed you would see that the quarter on quarter revenue also there will be an increase can uh, uh the quarter on quarter also will increase i think it will be then how much 71.8 crores so yeah so on that basis if you see you will see that quarter on quarter revenue has increased your on your also has revenue has increased other income nahi bada hai employee benefit has increased good thing and of course net profit of the period if you see bada hai right 137 percent yeah say six it's in lakhs no yeah so 6.92 lakhs to um uh, Sorry, 6.92 crores to 16, 16.4 crores. And of course, even on quarter on quarter basis, you would see it has increased from 12 to uh, 16 crores. The next thing we will see here is the uh yeah the the asset liability mismatch to nahi hai. if you see the current asset right 13 uh, 135 crores hai, and current liability is 103 crores it is greater it's greater than one uh so that is there uh if you see the reserve also has increased can you see the total equity has increased right roe is also has increased because of course roe ka point hai kya hai? if you do the uh roe ka analysis due point analysis karte to kaisa hota hai? asset turnover into uh, asset turnover is nothing but volume then of course your profit margin which is your value growth and of course your last is your uh, leverage your financial leverage asset turnover be aya hai because this time this this year they have had an asset turnover of eight times eight x right so of course you would see the roa increasing because of that the next thing comes is profit margin you have a profit margin kaise aega you would have seen that the raw material price of all this you know you, uh, to make all this um uh, adhesive they use a lot of bam and other products now uh, i think polyvinyl polyacetate something that's that's a chemical that they use so what had happened again the same situation just like the paints company because of the uh, covid ka supply demand ka issue the price had gone up to 1.5x and to and to take care of the to protect your margin what will these people do they will increase the price and pass it on to the uh on to the consumers so because of and now the raw material ka price has come down so because of that there is a margin expansion that has that has happened right Use value bhi aa hai. and the other one is financial leverage i don't think this company has a lot of financial leverage because in debt nahi hai. Kuch bhi, koi bhi debt nahi hai. they're a debt free company but uh in spite of that also ROE ka pe koi problem nahi hai because a lot of the times you know when you see a company they'll have this 25 percent growth rate they tell but what happens is the ROE is hardly 15, 16%. So that that growth, you know, it, it's very difficult to get that growth. It's not impossible, but in order to go to achieve that growth, you know, people, uh, the companies might have to take debt or dilute equities. Here, even that won't be the problem because the ROE is around um, 55%, right? ROE is around, I think, 55, uh, around that percentage. So if you're targeting a 25% growth or your ROE 55%, it, it is not a I mean, it, it's good, right? And also one of the reasons the ROE is so high is because this company has so much cash, you know, like they're so cash rich company. Um, I, I don't know why they have so much cash, but yeah, again, they've been very slow with their progress also, right? If you see if the way Pedalite has expanded over the last 65 years, and if you see the way these people have expanded, right? A key plant there, like until now, since the time of inception till now, if you see, uh, like 2006, when Euro 7000 started, now there is only one key plant hai, in that uh, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. And you would have seen, right? They've just kept increasing the capacity there. Brownfield kar 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 ke unko, usko expand kiya hai. That's all they've done. They haven't opened another new plan so you can understand they've been i think very conservative with the whole uh with the whole growth approach now let's see here um cash uh, you would have seen the uh, cash flows mein agar aap dekhte ho, can you see here the profit um uh, the profit before tax has has increased right it has come from 26 to 61 almost 2x ho gaya compared to last year to this year right that's one thing after adding all your depre uh, depreciation changes uh and other things the working uh the cash flows before your working capital also has increased from 24 to 61 crores now here can you see here the net cash flow has decreased right now there's an interesting thing that has happened here is if i read in the con call that the accounting practices have changed that in days ka kuch accounting practices that has changed so what because of that what has happened is there are two 
two kinds of uh, when you do a fixed deposit right there are two things one is that fixed deposits where the maturity is after 12 months and the other thing is a fixed deposit where the maturity is between 3 to 12 months right it can mature anywhere between 3 to 12 months so those fixed deposits those fd that you do where the amount will get matured between 3 to 12 months that should be that should be considered as cash and cash equivalents right uh, and, and and not as not current financial assets so what has happened is because you have had a lot of money there as a result because of that the net cash flow uh from operations it seems less the, the final net cash flow used in operating activities it seems less but if if i don't consider that whole in day esca practice and like if i go back to the normal accounting practices you would see that the cash flow has increased in fact it has, it is 37.7 crore compared to so if i'd say yeah uh yeah 37.7 crore so it has increased right 2 to 37.7 crore so it's a big increase you would see uh, the only red flag i have is the trade receivable has increased a lot right matlab kya uh last time uh, last year same time may company ke pass 12.24 crore nahi aa raha tha which means what you are you are selling your uh, product uh, your or your mall to the to the uh, to your dealer or your retailer whoever it is and that person hasn't been you know like after selling the product that cash conversion that is there that has to come to you it 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 didn't come and here the delay the time that is there you know it has uh, it has increased uh, although if i have to check the debtor days has improved i think from 122 to 107 days i'm not sure exactly the number but again this this is the only red flag that i have inventories ka increase is not a big deal because like i told you they're setting up a new plant a uh, new building for you know new plant for the storage of raw materials so increase in inventory makes sense because of that other than that if you see there is nothing as so in this in this uh, what is that in this company as to like you know uh in in the in the whole cash flow that is the only one thing uh after that uh right there is other than that you will see purchase or sale of fixed assets nothing uh none of none of, uh, not a big item the only thing is i could say dividend because earlier the company would was not giving dividend i think i think over a year back or something at that time this was even a smaller company they weren't doing con call i think uh and the company and i think all we had was an annual report as much as i remember this was very long back and all they had was an annual report they were, they were a small company they were really growing well but having said that the only part of concern was these people were having so much cash and they weren't giving dividend but you would see that the salaries of you know the top management would keep increasing so that was kind of a thing but having said that now you would see that they're giving dividend also right so that's that about your cash flow I, I have explained everything you know the entire balance sheet so the other thing is the last thing is after the q4 fi23 so yeah that's the management commentary like i told you how will the volume growth come from you know volume growth comes from all the distribution and the capex that they're doing that's one thing uh and you know how are we can significantly improve from that so here, what is the red flags and the risks that I see here is one is the promotional scheme that you're talking about, right? Aapka carpenter ke saath kya reward program hai. I, I wonder, I understand that, you know, the carpenters are very loyal to them and, and everything, but I wonder if this can be like, I know they have been running this loyalty and reward program for a long time, you know, since I think 2015 or 2016. But here's the thing, like, I think anybody can come and replicate this, right? Like even Pedalite today has a huge network, has a huge uh, active active dealers compared to these people. And they can come and replicate this anytime. And there's this another company called Nickel Additives. Even they can do that. So I don't necessarily see this as a moat, right? Because anybody can come and take this away from you. And what if they end up giving even more discounts? So that is one thing. The other thing is, of course, your raw material price. You know, if that increases, again, your whole product can come into, since, you know, it, it is very difficult here to take a price hike because if, if you take a price hike here what happens is there can be where people start to down trade your product so i i see these two risks and the other one thing i would like to highlight is because see, these people are very small company right i think their market cap is hardly 15 1500 crores that's it so very small company and even right now can you see they're only into 12 states right hardly into 12 states or 12 states may only in five states are like heavily penetrated other than that you know they have still a lot more work to do they're only in only in like metros and tire one cities so here is a thing like i i think the company can like still more you know like penetrate into another other states rather than just two states uh, uh the other thing is like since they have a lot of cash right it's their cash and cash equivalents if you see you know they, they have they have a lot of cash and the roe is at 55 percentage you know like so it, it just shows you that they can set up another plant and you know like be, i think be aggressive with the growth uh you know just 
uh, two states, they're just penetrating into two states. You know, they can do another capex, and I don't know. Uh, they can be aggressive. And someone had spoken about this in Concon also, but uh, the management was like, you know, they are being aggressive because they're going to penetrate even deeper in the existing states that they are there. And of course, they will go to two more states because when you see the way Pedalite has worked over the years, you know, they were quite aggressive when they when they started their whole distribution and the active dealers that they're doing. So that is one thing. The last thing I would like to highlight is a management uh, uh, management background. Uh, this is this is somewhat a red flag for me because I think on two instances, in the year 1997 and 1998, and somewhere in 2003 and 2004, the management, uh, the SEBI had filed a case on them telling that, you know, they were involved in rigging of uh, uh, in, in stock manipulation. So I don't know as, as far as to like, um i mean i don't want to go into detail of that of course but you are i mean see there has been instances where market doesn't forgive and there has been instances where if growth is there market doesn't care about anything else else also i think a classic example is force motors every time you know when we come out of a deep water cycle and and the sales number are good of force motors you would have seen it has done probably 4x like uh so that's the thing i just wanted to highlight this this is like one red flag that i found out regarding the company ka management ka you know the background other than that it's good to it's good to go you would see that um company is great and i i don't like if they are entering into two states increasing the active dealership i don't see why they can't do a 25 percent volume growth right it, it seems a bit easy for them to do having said that yes it would be back it would be a bit nice you know like probably if they can increase the uh increase the capacity uh and again penetrate into more states like i think i think that that's the only thing i have to tell other than that a great company absolutely great um absolutely great company that i don't see any flaw other than this so yeah uh all we can do is track and see if you know if the company delivers the 25 percent volume growth that they've told and and hopefully that 25 percent volume growth gets converted into the top line also uh because and and i and this whole reward program thing like what happened in this quarter i hope it doesn't happen again in the next quarter next quarter or the coming quarters and of course let's track and see you know if this company does what it say it will do 25% volume growth while maintaining an EBITDA margin of 22 to 25%. Yeah. So having said that, thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll see you again uh, next time. Uh, have a nice day.